So what what have you got to say on body image, identity, and well being? Well, it, it got me thinking a little bit about um, the first question in my mind was, uh, what is body image? So I was like, yeah, well, I wonder, I wonder what that is. And this will sound like a weird example, but it's the one that came to me today. Like, my uh, my girlfriend has a little puppy called Jack, and Jack's a uh, he's a Jack or Pooh, so he's a cross between a Jack Russell and a, a poodle, and a toy poodle. He's tiny. But he doesn't know that he's tiny. The only thing that ever lets him know that another dog is bigger than him is the, the volume of their bark, like how loud they are. Aside from that, he'll, he's, he's, uh, he's happy to, uh, uh, to go up to any dog you like. And, but the downside of that is when he sees a reflection of himself, he doesn't know that it's him. So he'll leap at, the, at his reflection in the window because, and so I was thinking about that and I was thinking, wow, he doesn't actually know that that's, that that's who he is. Like he doesn't, he hasn't made a connection between an image of himself in his mind and the being that goes around the world doing things. And I thought, oh, well, that's different. Cause I know, you know, I can look in the mirror and I can go, oh, that's me. Uh, and I bet you guys all can too. Um, but he hasn't done that. And yet he, Jack seems to experience a lot of well being. So the fact, like if you were to able to sit Jack down and which is a difficult enough job in and of itself, but if you were able to sit him down and say, Jack, tell us about your body image. Well, and if Jack could talk, he would be like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And we say, well, do you have a good body image? Do you, do you, when you see yourself in the mirror, do you be like, oh, filled up with love? And he's like, no, I'm kind of filled up with love all the time. When I see myself in the mirror, I don't even recognize it's me and I jump, I jump at it. So like, and here's the thing that got me thinking. It's not that Jack has a good body image or a bad body image. He's just got an entirely functional one. Like he knows where he ends and the rest of the world begins good enough to, you know, go and running after a ball and to eat his food and to stay out of the way of moving traffic and that sort of stuff. He's got a perfectly functional body image, but he doesn't have a bad body image and he doesn't have a good body image. He doesn't really give a shit. He's just being a dog and going around and enjoying life. And yet he experiences a very high degree of well-being. And the thing about Jack is he hasn't read a single personal development book. He got separated from his mother very early in life. So we would imagine traumatic, you know, separation. He's like, none of that stuff, none of that's going on. He hasn't been on any courses. He doesn't have a coach. He, he He's just experiences a very high level of well-being and love and happiness as far as i can tell and uh so it got me thinking what actually is body image and then it got me thinking something else like and the question i i wondered aloud was this if you were to wake up tomorrow morning and discover that your body image had improved, like it was twice as good or five times as good or a hundred times as good, like your body image had just gone through the roof in terms of how brilliant it was. How would you know? How would you know? It's kind of an interesting question, right? Because we, we get all these books and people telling us we need to work on our body image and have a better body image and a better self image and a this and that and the other. And I'm kind of like, well, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure. Like it probably, I probably wouldn't want to tell anyone to develop a bad body image, but it, I, I'm not sure that the, I'm, and I know lots of people have bad body image or a negative body image or a negative self image or whatever. But here's the funny thing. Hmm. 
that's not the funny thing. The thing I'm about to say is the funny thing. Funny, peculiar. Not funny. <laughs> but you might laugh. It's strange, isn't it? So here's the funny thing. See, when children are born, they reckon, and I can't quite remember, it's either six months or 16 months. I'll find out the research at some point. But up until either six months, it's probably six months actually, up until six months, they do this experiment. They sit children down in front of a mirror and the kid's like doing his thing. And then they take the mirror away and they put a bit of rouge on the child's cheek, a bit of, a bit of color on the child's cheek. And then they put the mirror back in front of the child. And the child doesn't react until after either six months or 16 months, whichever it is. And at a certain point, when they put the mirror back, the child goes, oh, they see that up until that point, they don't know it's them. They're like Jack. They don't know that it's them. They're looking at it in the mirror. They haven't got anything other than the most functional body image, a, a, an image of self that allows them to, you know, tell the difference between their hand and their face and that sort of thing. It's totally functional. They can't. So, so up until that age, they, they don't have a body image. And isn't that interesting to know what that means is that for each one of us right here on this call, there was a time when we didn't have a body image. Isn't that interesting? Not like we didn't have a good body image or didn't have a bad body image or didn't have an accurate body image or didn't have an any, just didn't have one. Didn't have one at all. And so what that means is that whatever a person's self-image might be, whatever their body image might be or anything like that, it's something that they have made up over time. It's something they have, they have developed. It's something they've uh, put a lot of work into. And so then it gets me back, to, and that's not even the funny thing. So the funny thing is this. Talk about body image and identity. Well, check this out. I, I want you to, I can see you guys now, so I want you to do this exercise with me. Hold up your hand like this, literally your actual hand. Uh, we're not going to do a, an oath or anything. I just want you to go, this is my hand. I literally say it using words. This is my hand right on. And I go, this is my nose. And this is my head. And then, and then we'll go like this. Go, These are my ideas and thoughts. And you can go kind of, this is, this is my mind. And this is my world. Stretch your arms up. But check this out, watch this. So this is my hand, but I'm not my hand. You're not your hand, right? Like you've seen people who have lost a hand or lost an arm, but it's still them, right? So you're not your hand. I met a guy, this guy. This guy is an Israeli paratrooper. Paratrooper, no, Israeli soldier. And he got a... Uh, um, attacked in a terrorist attack while he was out on patrol with his buddies. They were out doing soldiering and they got hit with a, a enemy bomb, an IED or something like that. Blows him up. He said, his exact words, he said, I woke up in hospital the next day, came out of his, he was, I guess he went into a coma and he woke up out of a coma the next day. He says, and I was a meter shorter. His legs had been blown off said, I was a meter shorter. And he said, the moment I realized that I was a meter shorter, I filled up with joy and I was happy for the next eight years. And I was like, that is a very unusual story. What do you make up? What do you make of that? He said, well, I realized that I was not where my happiness came from, that I'm not my legs and that I'm not my body. And that realization hit me so strongly that I was just happy for the next eight years. And then my girlfriend left me and I felt sad for a while and then I got better. <laughs> so this is your hand, but you're not your hand. 
you're the one who has a hand. You're the one who's experiencing that hand. This is your nose, but you're not your nose. Say that, go, this is my nose, but I'm not my nose. This is my head, but I'm not my head. These are my thoughts and ideas, but I'm not my thoughts and ideas. This is my mind. I'm not my mind. This is my world, my reality, but I'm not my world. I'm not my reality. I'm the one who's experiencing it. And like I'm, I'm saying this not as a kind of, you know, talk yourself into it or try to believe it or anything like that. I'm, believe whatever you like. I'm saying you're not your body. You may have thought you are. You may have thought your whole life that you are, but you aren't. That's not you. You're the one who's experiencing it. And you're not your thoughts. You're the one who's experiencing them. And this is important because here's the thing. If Jack doesn't even have a self-image, and for good or for bad, or at least nothing more than the most functional ability to run after a tennis ball and jump into the air when he sees someone he likes. And if a little baby can't identify themselves in a mirror until they're either six months or 16 months, then this thing we call self-image must be something we've invented. Like, does that seem a fair assertion? I say invented, I don't mean using like, you know, sticky back plastic and washing up bottles. I mean, we've, we've created it. Just like, like, check this out. Think of a pink elephant. Can everyone think of a pink elephant? Okay. Or a, or a purple rhinoceros with a top hat riding a unicycle. Now my guess is you've never thought of a purple rhinoceros with a top hat riding a unicycle, but you can kind of imagine one, right? Well, that's made up. You've made that up. You've made that up. That's thought you've used to make that up, this power that we call thought. And you've been using that to make things up your whole life. The first, first thing you started making up with that was your experience of life. And when you were born, you didn't even know what you were. You didn't know that these were hands. You couldn't do that, that thing there, where you touched your nose, you couldn't do that. Your best shot at that would be like, Ugh. you didn't know how to do that because you didn't have any kind of even functional body image at that age, but you learned it and you learned it so deeply that you don't even remember doing it. And you created a map of you and a map of yourself, a map of your body and a map of your world and a map of what you're like and what you're not like and what you can do and what you can't do. And the whole thing's made up. It's made up. And I know what you might be thinking. Yeah, 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 I get it. It's made up. So how do I change it to something better? Well, here's the thing. Even better than changing it for something better is seeing that it's made up. I was trying to explain this to someone once. I, I gave her this example. I said, if you imagine you hire me to come around because every night when you go to sleep, you can't get to sleep because you think there's a monster in your cupboard at the foot of the bed. There's a monster in the closet. He said, now, what's the best thing I could do as your coach? They said, get rid of the closet. He said, no, it's not the best. The best thing would be to show you that there's no monster, that it's made up, that you made it up. Once you realize that you made it up, then there's nothing to be afraid of. So that's what I was thinking anyway, when I was thinking, what is self-image? And this other thing of like, if you woke up the, tomorrow and your self, so the one question I had was if your self-image had improved a hundredfold, how would you know? 
And then I thought, what would happen if you woke up tomorrow morning and you found you just didn't have one anymore? You just had the most functional kind of, oh, I have a good enough self-image to be able to reach out for a glass and take a drink from it. Or I have a good enough self-image to pick up a pen and write something with it. Or I have a good enough self-image to be able to pick up my glasses, put them on without poking myself in the eye. Like that's the purpose of a self-image is to orient yourself in the world. That's what this power that we've been given to create a, an image of ourselves that's fit for purpose, that's good for navigating the world. But what's happened to us innocently, and funnily enough, the advertising industry has done very well out of this, is uh, we've got confused and we've started believing that this picture that we've made of ourselves, this story that we've made of ourselves, this map that we've made ourselves, is who we really are. And it's not. You know, uh, wherever you are right now, wherever you are in the world, you can go to your local library or your local shop or whatever, and you can buy a map of the area. But the map isn't the area. Even a really, really good map isn't the place that it represents. You know, if you, you can get a brilliant map of New York, but that's not New York, that's a map. And we could nod and say, oh yeah, I get it. But what I'm suggesting to you is that your ideas of yourself, they're a map, they're not you. They're not even much to do with you. They're just something you made up. They may have some functional value and allow you to, you know, put your glasses on without poking yourself in the eye. It might make you, you know, able to be a good dancer or whatever it is you enjoy doing, but none of it means anything about you. None of that map knows anything about who you really are. And who you really are is the one experiencing this stuff. Who you really are is the one that made the map, made the picture, made the story. That's who you are. 